taking a college course on history, I accidentally and literally fell asleep in the course. Even though I made an A in that class and I made an A in all my other college courses, the sad deal of it is that history is made mandatory for most degree plans. Yet, most people, after taking history, forget all about the subject matter. When we could be taking other courses instead of our history class. That being said, no system is perfect. This isn't a philo philosophical argument because I can set a standard of perfection, then design a system which meets that standard, thereby making our system perfect. So let's all agree that no system is perfect. Therefore, our public education system is not perfect. And this is the premise of my presentation. Throughout my presentation, I'll answer three questions. What is education? How has education evolved over the past century? And what are some problems associated with our public education system? <clears throat> Let's start by defining education. Well, what is education? Webster Dictionary defines education as the active process of educating. That's pretty simple. So what does educate mean? Webster Dictionary again defines educate as <clears throat> to develop mentally, to develop mentally, morally, or aesthetically, especially by instruction. Nowhere does it mention school. Therefore, my subtitle of this particular presentation is Education Then School, Not the Other Way Around. Going back to 1852 was the first state to enact laws that made it mandatory for children to go to public education. Before then, there were no public education systems available, and it wasn't until 1852. So all of this happened actually around the 1900s, about a century ago. And I say around 1900s because at 1918, the, all states by that time had laws where children were required to go to school. And so the government took a hold of our education. Why? You know, all, their, all, their, all the curriculum for public schools, it's all designed in their image, not about students. And can, I mean, does anyone know about what time that era was? It was the industrial age. Hence the title of my speech, The Industrial Model of Education. And so we're living in an educational model that was designed for the industrial age, which was about a century ago. Of course, we're moving, we're moving away from that, but before I get to that part, moving forward past after public education was required by all states, of course, well, let, let me uh, sidetrack a little bit from that because we have private schools and we had uh, religious cultures and, and all of this that took a part of it. So then the states, sometime around the 1900s, also allowed an alternative to public schools, which is private schools. But after moving forward and progressing forward, colleges really started to, uh, to, to move forward. And <clears throat> so, Colleges started to move forward, and that's that's it was about seventy years ago when colleges kind of first started. And the reason being was the industry, uh, Henry Ford and some of these other factories, and they started creating specialized jobs, and people were going, such as Henry Ford and some of the, some of the people creating the jobs, they would go to colleges and say, hey, teach your students how to work for us. And then it began. And the problem was, as I said before, is that no system is perfect. Well, when you create a system that's not perfect and you keep building upon it, building upon it, then where do we go from there? You have to hit a breaking point at some time, just like the Titanic did when something gets so big and the system becomes so confident. You have to hit a breaking point. I think that's where we are now. We're at what's called the informational age, where information travels as fast as the speed of light. And it can also be called the computer age. But we have to get out of the old model of thinking, which is the industrial age model, 
and move forward and accept the change that's happening right now because even people at Stanford University are having these debates, the dean, the board of education and all these people and that's why some colleges are actually more successful than others. Stanford University, Harvard, we all hear about people who create businesses. Well, it's because they are, are actually instructing, they, they are instructing in a way that meets the real world, the ordinary world, not just academics. One of the issues with our public education system, out of many issues, is they punish children for making mistakes. But if you get, go into the real world after school, mistakes are good for learning. And we shouldn't punish them for making mistakes. We should, we should help them repair their mistakes, maybe learn from them, and all of this. Test, okay, when we take tests in school, it's called cheating when, <laughs> it's called cheating when you, when you help each other out on tests. But in the real world, it's called teamwork. <laughs> Let me true. finish by giving you a quote out of that. Albert Einstein said, it is nothing short of a miracle that the modern methods of instruction have not yet entirely strangled the holy curiosity of inquiry. Which means that going through school, we, we sort of lose that cre creative spirit as a child. And all I ask is that you read each quote at least once at some time today, and then it's up to you what you do with the paper. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Toastmaster.